Hello everyone, this is Stigmaster Luke, and in this video I'll be showing you some basics to building as well as some helpful tips and tricks. Whenever I build, I like to start off by creating a part palette. A part palette is where you pull your custom parts from to build with. I've noticed that some other builders like to have colossal palettes of 20 or more parts. Personally, I think you only need some around 1 to 5 different parts in your palette. It's really up to preference so you can have as many as you like. The first part in my palette today is going to be a basic 4x1x2 by by size part. That's 4 wide, 2 wide in the other direction, and 1 stud tall. So if you insert a part from the basic objects menu, you'll notice that its size in the Y is 1.2. Uh, that's because the form factor is a brick. So if you change the form factor to symmetric, that makes it so when you resize it vertically, it's always in an interval of one. This is very helpful when building, and you should do it even if you're not quite sure what it means. When building a pallet, it's also nice to have parts that are both anchored and unanchored as well. Today, I think all we're going to need is an unanchored part, so I'm just going to leave it unanchored. Before we get building, I need to explain some things about welds. A weld, or a joint, is a connection between two parts that holds them together. This is mostly used in projects that you want something to be destructible, or where you want something to stand still while not being anchored. As you can see, parts have different surface types. On the top, by default, they have studs, and on the bottom, they have inlets. These two surface types act as a joint when dragged together. In terms of surface joints, there are five different surface types you should think about. There's studs and inlets, which I just mentioned. Uh, they attach to each other and only each other, as, but they also attach to universal. Um, universal is a combination of both, and it only attaches to universal studs or inlets. And then there's smooth, which nothing but weld attaches to, and weld, which attaches to any surface type. And you can see here a quick demonstration on how surface attachments or welds work. You'll see me in the video almost continuously using Control C and Control V to copy and paste uh, mostly parts from my part palette, but also specific parts that I need repeated in my construction. You can also paste a part from the location that you copied it from by going into Explore and right-clicking on Workspace and using the Paste Into button. Looks like we're set. Let's get started. In this footage, I'll mainly be building a bridge. I start off by building the landscape and some pavement foundation for the bridge to connect to, as well as a river for the bridge to span across.
After building what I consider to be an appealing landscape, I decide the size and the structure of the bridge. I do this by making sure that the posts are the same width as each other and that they're the same distance apart from each other. Next is a little trick on how to build curves and arches. So you start off by inserting a part and inserting a cylinder mesh into that part. Then you just resize it to be the size of the curve or arch that you're building and build on top of it like an outline or stencil. I'll also add a symmetric, unanchored wedge part to my palette. Another good shortcut or key command would be the R and T keys. When you're dragging a part and you press R, it will rotate your part by 90 degrees, and if you press T, it will tilt your part by 90 degrees. A useful feature for selecting multiple parts is to hold either shift or control. Um, when you do that, every part that you newly select will be added to your selection.
So I've finished the arches and I'm going to go into a test solo. Here you can see that the rocket launcher that I'm using does not explode the arches, at least not very well. That's because the parts are too big. To fix this, we're going to segment the larger parts into smaller parts. Right here you can see a demonstration that I've created. Here's a giant wall that's not segmented, and you can see when I shoot it, it doesn't fall apart, <laughs> it's not destructive, and it's not fun. Um, and here's a wall made out of a bunch of parts, a bunch of bricks, and when I shoot it, it explodes, and it's really entertaining. So that's what we're going to recreate with the arches and the rest of the bridge. At this point in the construction, I realized that I could use the surface type called No Outlines. It does very much what it says it does, is when you place it on the surface, that face will not render the black little outlines, which is very useful for the arch, because the lines, the vertical and horizontal lines, tend to take away from the form. Here's the second test. You can see it's a lot more fun to play around with, a lot more fun to shoot and destroy. There's just uh, a lot more possibilities for what can happen with all the extra parts.
One thing that could make this scene even cooler would be adding velocity to the water. So the water is just kind of this stale, non-moving thing. Parts that fall on it just sit there. But you can change that by changing the velocity of the water. Here you can see I set it to fast and then slow. I'm just experimenting a little bit. I ended up setting it to negative 10 in the x-axis. So what happens is when you set the velocity of an anchored part, the water is anchored. Uh, what happens is any part that is physically simulated or flying around or moving that lands on top of it gets that velocity. So the parts that land on it start to flow down the water like it's actually moving. It makes your environment feel a lot more realistic and fun. If you ask me, this conquering of the river is a good end to this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or tricks of your own in building, go ahead and post them in the comments or send me a private message on Sigmaster Luke on Roblox, and I look forward to seeing what you'll create.